it was my birthday, February 6th. So it's February 6th for me in Cyprus for everybody in the States. It was still February 5th. And I'm on Facebook and I'm scrolling and this like random dude comes into my timeline. Have no idea where he came from. I don't know if I was friends with someone who was his friend and they commented on something. But whatever the statement was, someone was talking about their success. And I have to say that initially I was like, this has to be bull crap. Like, does anybody in this industry really do consistent six figure months? And they were talking about it was like their third or fourth month in a row doing 100K. And I was like, they're lying. Let me click on this man's page. But I saw so many uh, testimonials and so many people tagging him and saying he's the reason for their success. And I was like, I'm going to have to look deeper. One thing Kevin probably doesn't know is that I was probably a stalker for about five hours. I went as far back in his Facebook profile as it would possibly let me without being his friend. I shot him a friend request. And now I know I was lucky to get approved because... <laughs> That sometimes doesn't happen. But once he approved me, I was able to see everything. And I was just taken uh, by his results, uh, by the passion that I could feel from his post. And I saw he was uh, asking if anybody wanted to do consistent, like, seventy, eighty thousand dollar $80,000 months. And I was like, let me hear what bull crap he's going to say. I inboxed him. He answered, got a phone call. And that night, I was in. <laughs> it was really that simple. Yeah, I thought I had a great business, which is what's funny about it. For quite some time, I thought I had a great business. Um, mostly one-on-one -on -one was how I was operating. And I had attempted on a couple of occasions to create a group. But I really struggled to fill the group programs. I really struggled to get enough of my ideal people in there. I'd had a couple of terrible situations when it came to groups. And so I kind of threw my hands up and was like, I'm done with the groups. But then I was also tired of doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, at the time that I met Kevin, I was in, I believe, Cyprus. And I had been traveling at that point about nine months. But most of the time I had been traveling because of the one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't have a, a lot of time to like travel through the city, see the sites, you know, the tourist stuff, which is kind of the point in traveling the world. Um, and I was extremely frustrated and I woke up right after Christmas and said, you know what? I'm sick of this and I'm letting everybody except for two clients go. I didn't think that out very well <laughs> because that also meant I let all my income go and I'm in another country with a nanny and a child. And so it, it was a, a situation at the time I actually, um, talked to Melissa about joining Kevin's um, program. I, had, I didn't even know what my income was. Melissa asked me what my monthly income was and I was oblivious, but it was really because I was scared to look at it. And it was something like $6,000, $7,000 a month. And I was so embarrassed to admit it. Uh, I remember a point that I would have been proud of that, but I was embarrassed to admit it because I'm on the road and really it took way more than that for me to survive. And we were barely inching by. And as long as I didn't admit it or look at the revenues, it wasn't a problem. But as soon as I admitted it, I was like, oh, yeah, something has to change. So that's kind of where I was. Um, my income had took a drastic hit by letting the programs go and by letting the one-on-ones go. In another country, barely making it um, to the standards that I would want to make it. So uh, I did a, a plane ride with Kevin. I think he calls it mastermind in the sky or something along those lines, which was pretty cool. FYI, side note, first private ride, totally spoiled me. Totally. I'm going to do it with my clients. <laughs> totally. Uh, but in addition to that, like really having that opportunity to do that, see the plan drawn out. I knew that as soon as I walked down those stairs, like I didn't have time to go home and think about it and, and ponder over it. The only way the plan was going to work is if I went home and I started putting it into action. Uh, the first thing I did, I remember he took me home. And as soon as I walked in the house, I said, hello. And then I went to my computer and I sent out an email. And I started scheduling strategy sessions. But the only way I cannot allow fear to get in the way is to take fast action. And so that's what I do. The first person I talk to, like, I'm nervous. I'm shaking in my boots. I listen to rap it. And I'm like, oh, goodness, like, who am I? Like, I really went through the who am I to ask for this? And 
it really helped to get into the family group and scroll through and look at other people's testimonials and look at what people are charging. And I'm like, well, I'm no different than them. They're no different from me. So that actually gave me the security to know, okay, well, somebody's paying it. I just need to find them. And maybe it's because I'm not asking. But the first person I had a strategy session with said yes. And I maintain my cool on the line. I was cool about it. But I hung up that phone and it was like, ooh, ooh. Like, I was so excited because it was like, wait, I am worth it. Somebody will pay me this. And if for no other reason, like forget what my amazing revenues are, for no other reason, I really began to believe in myself. And I realized that other people saw me as worthy. So why don't I see myself uh, as worthy? And that was really the beginning. And I remember the first week after just doing rapid, the first week um, I signed 10 people into my program. I think I only talked to 15 people. <laughs> the conversion rate was amazing. And it, it just felt so awesome. And I knew that that was the beginning of something really amazing. Uh, it took two months and I started doing consistently 100K in sales a month, consistently. I had never held a live event that I upsold into a high ticket program. Um, I've held four maybe five at this point. I don't hold a live event that I don't do at least $200,000 in sales at the live event. It's a lot of people now talking about high ticket. And if you go back just on their Facebook profile six months ago, they were talking about something completely different. And six months before that, they were talking about something completely different. I think that uh, one thing about this industry in particular is people aren't focused. And then what they do is they see people like Kevin and they're like, oh, this is what's working. So let me jump onto this. And as far as I could tell, Kevin has been talking about high ticket for years. Like it's the way to go. And so I think it's no better way to find an expert than to find an expert. And just because you're talking about it for six months doesn't make you one. Some find someone who's been talking about it for years and they have uh, people who have gone through the program or have worked with them and, and have success stories. Like he's the OG a high ticket, you know? <laughs> I feel like a lot of the success that I have seen for my clients comes from the fact that I really began to care about their results, how their lives change, how their families' lives change, um, and really wanted to get in there and, and see how I could really assist. So first, I feel like that in itself was amazing to me, was to, to really care and see how that one shift mattered. The struggle was teaching someone else how to have a leveraged business when mine really wasn't leveraged and how to teach them to really succeed financially when in secret, I was doing a little bit of struggling. And so really the process of going through this program, really learning how to succeed, how to sell, how to show up, how to give a damn, it taught me how to teach them the same thing and really how to really run a program. I had been running a program for like four years, one-on-one -on -one programs, and it wasn't until I saw the example. Like one thing Kevin probably doesn't know is I watch him all the time. Like at a live event, I watch him, I watch his movements, I watch how he does stuff. I probably come to some of his live events to watch because I don't know the appropriate way to do a lot of things. And being my mentor, I look to him for how to do X, Y, Z. And I think uh, a lot of my business success really comes from shutting up and modeling. And I've been able to do that And as I've modeled, finds out. So this is the, the, the kick em for me. My clients do the same thing. I have so many clients who say, you know, I just kind of come to your stuff to watch you and I model you. And I kind of laugh about it because I'm like, what kind of means you're modeling my mentor because I'm modeling him. I really don't know my business now. I talk about this a lot. Before I came to Kevin, I think the most I charged on a monthly basis was like $1,100. I think I'd ever charge more than that. I actually didn't think anybody would pay me more than that. And it actually felt to me huge. Like you're asking someone for $1,100. Like that's someone's mortgage, somebody's mortgage, somebody's rent. It felt huge to me. And I'm like, nobody would pay me more than that. 
not even talking about the financial impact it had to raise my prices, but the impact on my self-esteem to know that I could put a price on it and someone's going to pay me. I'm still kind of shocked. Like, it's still like a pinch me kind of thing. It couldn't really be real, right? But it's real. And, and I'm really a shadow. Like my, my past self is a shadow of, of who I am now because she was just a girl who didn't know, who didn't know the possibilities, who didn't know that there was this entire world that no one had to give me the keys for it. I just had to step into it. But I thought, like, I thought I was going to step in and somebody was going to give me these keys and be like, oh, these are the clients. Go grab them. They were already there. I just didn't know it.